All right. Thanks, everyone, for attending this breakout session on digital transformation and the value of our ServiceNow Impact program. I'm just going to go over our panelists here real quick. We've got Brian Bounds, who uh, oversees our platform, Army Grand Intelligence. He's been with the organization for 30 plus years, working in the DoD space with great support. We've got uh, Prashanti Kuchkula, who's our platform owner for Veterans Affairs. Uh, she's been with the organization of you know, 17 years of IT experience in a very large and vast uh, organization. We've got Brent Smith. He's uh, with ServiceNow. He oversees our federal impact program on the delivery mechanics. And I'm your moderator. I'm David Hegarty. Uh, I work for Brent. I oversee our federal healthcare and finance delivery organization. Uh, part of what we're going to just kind of cover just as an organization is real quick, what are some of the top three challenges that you see as platform owners with digital transformation and value? I can go first. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. We can hear you. Okay. All right. So, there are a couple of things that I would want to state first, and uh, we are in year six of ServiceNow implementation, and our focus today at VA is more on user experience, operational excellence, and even uh, uh, mission-driven outcomes. So there are a lot of things, um, demands that are coming our way, and we are discovering a lot. Of, you know millions of records we are discovering and all that right through this effort so i'll state the top three challenges the first one being the platform performance that has been a key uh, challenge that we have been facing and um, and the second one is like with the growing demands and customizations and automations we are having governance issues so that is another challenge that we are working on and almost there and the third one is about ROI return on investment we have invested a lot on ServiceNow licenses and support services but it is about uh, you know coming up with the value what's out there and what are we gaining from it so those are the three challenges that we are facing okay How about you, Brian? I appreciate it so so we're in a different position at NSCOM where we're in the end of year one. So we haven't actually gone live yet. We're still in the build process. Uh, so for me, the top three have been governance, uh, the first one. And it's not just how do you make a decision at the leadership, but it's, it's what's that structure to make sure that the leadership's getting the ability to make an informed decision. Uh, so what's the feedback? How do you bring it in? How do you process those requirements? and do it in a different manner than you're currently doing. The, the second uh, challenge for us is where do you start and where do you go next? So it's that plan. Yeah. How do you build out a plan to where each movement you take sets the conditions for the next movement? And then the last one is the communication strategy to make sure that you're not only communicating to the leadership for them to make those decisions and identify what they need, but also the workforce, what are they expecting out of this and how do you effectively communicate that so you don't have a, a dead program before you get started. Uh, so those are probably the top three for, for us. Yeah, I would, I would just add that I think you both mentioned governance, right? And that's something we see across the federal space, right? The, the lack of a sustainable governance model. And I think that's what Impact really leans in early to help set that foundation and build that sustainable governance model. So I'm glad to see that it's, it's working out for you guys. It, it really is. I mean, just to kind of follow up on that, one thing that the Impact team did is they, they were able to give me insight into other government organizations that, that have had success. Uh, so I can't just take a governance plan from another organization and stamp, stamp our, our name on it. It's taking the pieces and parts to make that uh, governance structure fit the, the organization. Because if you don't have that framework, right, like, you know, it takes more... Uh, we have to decide on what goes into service now and what does not fit into service now. That's the major key. And uh, really, these governance boards will help us through it because we have a wide variety of uh, demands coming our way. So, here you go. And having worked with both of you through this, we talked about hey, governance isn't just a one way ticket, it's technical governance, it's strategic governance, right. it's that oh, yeah. domain governance. That's right. And here's the more success we have within service now, the tougher it's become, right? 
more people want to use it, more people want to leverage it. Um, just thinking through that lens that you had with the more successes, even internally, even before Agola, how has the impact squad really leaned in beyond the government? What else have you been able to leverage from the impact team being able to support that? Start with Okay, uh, definitely for performance wise, we have had a uh, a, you know, good engagement with Impact Squad about health scan assessments, which tells us the health of our instance, like upgradability, like performance, security, usability, and manageability, which are mainly the key uh, performance indicators for our instance. So they have shown us how to see it and uh, how to fix them and archiving strategies, which are much key to our reducing our database. It was that we just reduced about like 11 million records so it's a like you know it's a very key result out there and uh, a couple of them like that and governance it, we really had working sessions with the impact squad about strategic governance which is executive steering committee and uh, technical governance boards like architecture review boards and even uh, portfolio governance boards like demand review boards so we did go through all these working sessions so we are working on it right now so here we go. a lot of uh, help from impact squad in uh, setting up that framework okay and for enscom you know, i already mentioned the uh, the insight and other people's uh, governance structures and processes uh, and same thing you know, multiple meetings to just go over to make sure that it's fitting right uh, the second piece was really uh, you know being literally so 20 something years in, in dod but literally only i'm on my second year in inscom uh, so when i took this over i was brand new and i couldn't i couldn't point out a single person in the entire command uh, so even though i think i have great intuition facts are better uh, so the the impact team did face-to-face -face interviews with different levels they interviewed the command group they interviewed the managers and they interviewed workforce personnel so that helped frame the the plan uh, i was able to lay out right up front here are the things that i think we need to get accomplished they were able to turn that into okay here's what you really need to get accomplished uh, so that was a, a big piece and then back into that communication strategy being able to effectively communicate what our plans were at the right level uh, pays huge dividends uh, if you can if you can get buy-in not only the workforce but the leadership at the same time you're you're really going to make some progress uh, and and i think that's what has served us well so far and brent across the federal space we see organizations using not only what they've talked about but accelerators advisory sessions with our mm -hmm. technical experts business yeah. experts how are you seeing that across the even larger federal space yeah i think it's true across the entire space and and brian mentioned the interviews right so we call that a success readiness assessment where we are interviewing different stakeholders within the the organizations to really get an understanding from your voice where you are across a number of different areas right do you have a documented strategy do you have governance in place right do, what's the roadmap look like what's the plan so that we can help and really lean in based on to your point brian what other successful organizations on the platform have done right so I think that's a, a critical part and it's one of the very first things we do as an impact squad is come in and, and really try to, to get that baseline of, of where you are as a customer so that we know where to really lean in, right? Nine times out of ten in this space, hate to say it, but governance is usually lacking, right? Uh, so we want to really spend the time and do those sessions and have those workshops to stand up that governance model because that really sets the foundation for everything you're going to do on the platform after that. And not to forget, uh, Impact Squad had actually helped us through the return on investment, the business value assessment, going through like each product line that we have out there, how, what kind of business KPIs or technical KPIs do we measure? And uh, this really helps the entire organization to see what's spent and what's the value that the organization got. So that's another thing.
And that's a, a normal key thing we walk through, right? Hey, KPIs in our federal space and not just our all ROIs. It's those business outcomes. It's that driver that we talk about. And I know we've done value blueprinting at the VA. I know we're working through that mm-hmm. currently through your organization. And that's a big thing we accelerate our right? Like, what's the best in practice that we're taking from the global service now practice? Not just commercial, but really into what our federal counterparts are doing um, a great deal. And then working with your squad member, right? they came in the very first day when you were about to organize it. There was no tell me about it yourself, what are you doing, where are they ready? How do you view their participation in your own organization? Daily communication, 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 PK, I know you have me on speak on it. I know you have your success architect on speak on it. Um, I know you reached out to your success architect. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, How do they work within your organization? <laughs> So first of all, I do have my sales and my impact squad and my speed dial. So uh, any issue with uh, licensing or so, I do go to my dentist right there. So here you go. And any issue I go with on the governance or so, I usually go to Don Dean. Uh, I know David's there. <laughs> David also now on speed dial. And uh, we do a lot of these. and. Uh, so on an everyday basis, we do have a weekly meetings and multiple meetings over, right? Like, you know, technical uh, uh, teams are involved. Any customization, technical issues, we have working sessions with them. There are different parts to it, management, technical, strategy, and all these different meetings with the impact squad. So we, I think that is the major, uh, communication know. point and we do meet multiple times a week and uh, trying to know what our top priorities are even on the operational side so we work together so. I know you and I we meet at a minimum on a monthly basis just yeah. for a one-on-one together I know Brent does one-on-ones at times with yourself and others across the organization um, Brian how about you how the teams helped you and your organization so I, I have done everything I can to have them completely integrated into the, the team <laughs> Uh, if they understand what we're doing now and what we need to be doing in the future, then, then they, they provide value added back in their recommendation. So I have a bi-weekly meeting with the team, uh, and it's typically on Teams or you know, some other virtual piece. Uh, but I always want to make sure they understand what we're doing now, and we, we look at what our end state is. So I don't know when the end state happens, but I know what the end state for the command needs to be. Uh, based on those discussions with the leadership and and other management teams. So we always go back and we look at it. And and so I split it up that way. What are we doing now? And then how do we get to that end state? Uh, And if you understand your end state, the plan is going to change a billion times, and it doesn't matter. It's good that it's changing. Uh, If you try to stick with a plan completely, then you're probably going to be off track by the time you get to the end. Uh, so it's always looking at that end state. So as an example, uh, the, the team took a look at uh, some questions my commander asked, uh, and they were able to completely lay out, hey, here's a technical roadmap with four different options depending on which direction you want to go. And I was able to have them do all that work with some very basic guidance, and then I, I present it. Uh, and I make sure it's part of the team. So that gives my commanders the ability to have some decision space. They don't have to make a decision, but they at least know that here, here's the menu that they can choose from, and based on what they choose is the direction we go. Uh, and that, that is just huge if you're not having to try to do it all yourself, and there's no way somebody like me, because I'm not the brightest grizzly in the woods here, uh, being able to get somebody smart to understand here are the capabilities of ServiceNow right now and what they're going to be in the near future. I think it, you touched on something. You, you called it the end state. We call it the, the North Star, right? That's Understanding right. really from the outset what that North Star is for your organization. What's that end goal that you're really, that overarching outcome that you're going for right and then everything we do from that point of understanding what that north star is is in some way directing us there right whether it's the governance that we talked about whether it's you know 
technical meetings, everything that we do is, is somehow pointed at helping you get to that North Star at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's important. And, and running through that customer impact plan, right? So those are the things we review a minimum quarterly. It's always yeah. moving. It's always adjusting. We know these things are living, breathing documents. It's not something to set in stone. These are deliverables that you all own and have full command and say over, I need to pivot, I need to change, I need to adjust. That's right. And as we've gone through the programs, I know with both of you, it's like, time out, we got to change, here's what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, working through with the impact teams, but even the larger scale organization at ServiceNow, you have those resources to help you out. So when we've done those advisory sessions, and both of you have leveraged them pretty heavily in terms of like, can I talk to someone who's an expert in discovery or service mapping right. or something really difficult we're trying to do within an organization, having that reach back, you both have commented how important that is. Mm -hmm. Can you just share a little bit about having that ability to just reach back into the organization and get something in a timely manner back? You want to go first? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go first. <laughs> so, uh, so my focus uh, for this first year has really been about ITSM. Uh, the leadership was starting to look at it and say, well, that's, that's really important, but I got this human capital problem. Uh, so, so it was one of those quick turns on, okay, let me get somebody smart on human capital. Uh, so they, and, and I would tell you any time that I've sent an, uh, a, a star cluster up asking for support, I normally get a response within about three to four hours. Uh, so it's not a long term to, to find out, okay, there's somebody willing to, to entertain my crazy questions. Uh, and they were able to get me in touch with the right folks to to get involved in that process, not only from a, hey, here's my problem, but hey, here, here's a couple of communities you need to start engaging with. Uh, so it goes beyond just the um, customer service being a customer, it's more of a building that Rolodex so I don't have to just take, no offense, government here, uh, no offense, I, I don't have to take the vendor's uh, solution or recommendation right up front. I can go listen to other people and find out, oh, okay, they, they've got this. Uh, and that helps build that plan again. Uh, and, and so yeah. it's, it's been absolutely critical to, to get timely responses and something that you can actually use where it's not just going to your leadership saying, yeah, the vendor told me this. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going back out to folks like you to find out how you've done it. And a couple of things that I would want to state is Impact Squad was started last year at VA, but then we started with customer success package, and then we had a Tiger team supporting us, and then we, here we go, we are at with uh, everything combined together, Impact Squad, and our major focus has been right now on governance, like what kind of governance do we need right now at VA for managing uh, ServiceNow functionality and platform stability and uh, we've been working on platform performance, like our uh, instant strategy, integration strategies, which impacts performance. And we have, uh, how do I say this? Like um, upgrade accelerations, ATF accelerations. So we have a lot of these things that we are working with ServiceNow, asking like, how does ATF work? Like we tried two years ago. It did not work for our use case but how about right now what improved upon it and how do we make sure we upgrade every year right now versus like you know uh twice in a year or every upgrade we already like you know every time we skip one upgrade in between and uh, how do we go with every upgrade so so we are working on upgrade accelerators and uh, a lot of a lot of these jump starts. All these jump starts, right? Yeah. Jump start your ATF. Jump right. start your you know uh, upgrade strategy. Jump start your governance That's areas. Right. You know, rent. We see this across the entire space that we have yeah. a whole catalog of these accelerators that organizations are taking advantage of. Yeah, and, and I would just add, and, and Brian, you touched on it, the resources, right? So customers that have impact have this core team. We call it a squad, right? Success architect platform architect, customer success managers, support account manager. And it doesn't stop there. And I, I've had so many customers, a couple in the room here that have said to me, Brent, I can't believe the reach that you have back into that organization to bring the really smart people to the table, depending on where we are, right? What that 
topic is that we want to dive deep into. So it's really that variable resource model, right? You have that core team that's with you every day, but you also have the benefit of, of us being able to reach in throughout the entire ServiceNow organization to bring in consultants and business process consultants and technical consultants, process uh, product success resources to really deliver that value to you, understanding where you're going, what you're trying to accomplish. And again, with that North Star always in the back of our mind of, hey, let's help them get there. This is all an advisory service too, so right? We've got yeah. partners in place at both organizations that we're working with. ServiceNow is working with the partner ecosystem through all of these deliverables to make sure you're successful. Because mm -hmm. ultimately that's what we're all in this room trying to make sure we're successful at the end of the day for the taxpayers and citizens throughout this. I guess thinking about that, do we want to take some questions from the audience? Absolutely. Any questions out in the audience at all for our panelists? Uh -huh. Enhancing your um, development. Um, obviously, there are a lot of contractors and a lot of experiences and use cases on how ServiceNow has been implemented for low code, no code apps and other applications throughout government. Um, so if I'm thinking about this right, how are we empowering the FTEs and others within the VA space for that low code? Correct, right. I mean, obviously you have some contractors performing today and uh, it seems like the requirement for all of the use cases and applications for ServiceNow can't be met currently because mm -hmm. There's so much you can do with it in such a large enterprise. So I'll take that. So that's what I mentioned, right? The demand backlog that we have is huge. And, um, and that is why our governance was much required on, is it really required to be on ServiceNow platform or some other platform? And are we doing a process re-engineering there? All that is required. At the same time, like, you know, you don't want to be sh lift and shift with all the customization into it. So we try to make sure right now, like I know we did a lot of customization too in between. So we want to get away from that. We want to focus on if it aligns with any of the out of the box modules and uh, what does it involve customization and what is it going to solve? What is the value from it? And we are also working on our citizen development program. If it is low code, no code, uh, it will help the FTEs or the business customers to actually automate their workflows if it is simpler versions. But most of the things that we are getting today are complicated. And uh, I feel it's more about the business process re-engineering versus lift and shift, like, you know, instead of shifting it, we should focus on that business process re-engineering and low code, then it works then we should be able to address a lot of uh, demand out there. And then we've got, we, it's funny, you and I were talking about this this morning. This, I know. This, all, this whole concept of where does the impact team fit in? Where are the resources we need? That's right. You know, uh, members from my team who are in the room are, who's already pointed out to you, here's who you're going to work through on some of these pieces. So just having that ability to reach back, and I know we've talked citizen development for a while, right? Making sure the guardrails are secure, making sure we're prepared and ready. That's a very key, key piece to that. Because as everyone knows, like ServiceNow is like a shared database. Like, you know, if you want to work in a global space, you need to be very careful about the platform stability. So that's one thing that we need to look into to see, can it be scoped? Can it be like, you know, uh, all these guardrails that David was also mentioning about. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, that was really helpful. Uh, much of what you guys shared as uh, challenges you had and the ones you had to solve, right? Those typically, I'm also government. Um, we've, we experience that regardless whether it's ServiceNow or any other modernization effort, right? Was there anything in particular with ServiceNow that you didn't experience with other modernizations that were a, hey, we need to deal with this? Um, and for example, for us, we are, in the moment we're trying to get ITSM up and running. It's been delayed a couple of times. One of the 
biggest challenges we've had is our existing data that is out there, right? We can't just shut it off. We've got to port it and we've got to set a profile, right? So that was unique to something like ServiceNow, but anything you guys experience that's unique to ServiceNow? Ryan, I'm going to turn to you since you're living this right now. <laughs> yeah, so the, I think the biggest challenge, and my team is going to look at me and, and give me the eyeball here, uh, it, it literally is that foundational data. Uh, having the foundational data right, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter what you did in the past. If you don't get it right going into the future, uh, you might as well just replace the software with something else and, and call it a success. Uh, so, so I think that the, the team has done an extraordinary job on, again, understanding that end state drives the foundational data that you must have to, to be successful to the level that you want to be. Uh, so we've had some uh, fits and starts. Uh, we found that it was mostly uh, issues inherent to the organization itself. Uh, and we're a global organization. Uh, so one help desk uh, over in Europe doesn't look like the help desk sitting in Indo-PACOM. Uh, and I think the last count I had is we have 62 help desks. Uh, so that has been a huge challenge. But smart folks, not only on the government side, but uh, you know, on the, the impact and the integration side have helped form, okay, this is what we need uh, and now it's just a matter of going through the muscle movements to get it. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. We'll have a line formed right here. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you. Um, I just wanted to, and this is this can this, can, this question can be for the entire panel. Um, we understand that again impact there there's a value proposition there and so as a as a agency as an organization you know if i'm a customer and i'm thinking i got this product and i want to do great things with it now comes impact well as a customer i'm like well i, I don't necessarily need the entire piece of impact maybe i don't want you touching certain parts of my business and how i operate and so i think I think a lot of customers may look at it as a sales job, right? They're trying to sell me more things. Mm -hmm. What can you do to ease that, you know, that initial feeling from the customer that it's a sales job, but no, it's more of, hey, I'm trying to help you, you know, you know, transition this product, O&M, all those kind of things. What is the value proposition? Andre from, I've had the pleasure of working with Andre in the agency for a number of years, and, and we're often faced with that, right? Um, I, I think it's important, and, and once people realize and understand that, one, we're not salespeople, right? I, I don't get paid on how many licenses you have. I don't get paid on uh, what products you have. I get paid on the success of your organization and getting to those outcomes. Uh, and you renewing with impact because you've gotten the value of what that squad brings each and every day. Um, I, I think once uh, we get to that understanding that we're there truly for your success, that's, that's all we think about. You know, I, I've said North Star a number of times, right? Once we understand that North Star and we help you get there, um, then it becomes really a trusted advisor situation versus a, I'm here to sell you something. Right, because again, we don't get paid on how many licenses you have, what products you have. It's truly, uh, and my boss is here and she will tell you, right? <laughs> uh, if, if Brent and his team don't deliver outcomes to our customers, one, we're not gonna have customers, and two, we're not gonna have customers that renew with us. Uh, I'd love to throw a, a, a data point out to everyone. As I sit here today and Impact, as you said, PK, has been a, a product of ours for a year, as I sit here today running the federal impact business, our renewal rate is 100%. Every customer that has purchased impact has renewed impact because we do exactly what we're up here talking about, deliver that value and help all of our customers get to that North Star that they're going for. I appreciate the question. Can I? I'm going to be cheeky and throw in one more stat for you as well. Our customers that have been on impact for six months or more have an NPS, a net promoter score of 18 points higher. 
and those without. So it just goes to show the level of satisfaction our customers are seeing and achieving by, by working with impact and their impact squads. That's right, so right. Back to the panel. That's right, that's right. I, I think to add to it real quick, um, a year ago I came to this and my main focus was to come to this discussion because I was trying to figure out, okay, what does impact do for me? I, and I kind of had the same sense of like, okay, well, this is, this is a prime opportunity for self-advertisement. Uh, but then it, it, they, they proved what they were. Uh, at no time have they ever said, oh, Brian, since you're doing that, you really need to add these things to it. Uh, they do not do that. Uh, they have focused on what, I, what I'm telling them my roadmap is and providing the input into it. Uh, but at no point is there a sales pitch where they say, you really need to do this. Uh, they give you options, and then it's really for the government to de determine that. It must have been a fantastic presentation last year that you sat in on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh, Troy Dye. I'm from the Inspire Value practice with ServiceNow, and so ROI is a big deal for us. I'm curious what made measuring that so difficult, uh, understanding impacts helping, but I'm curious what, what the challenges were in, in understanding what your ROI was. I'll take that. So first of all, it is everyone uh, like involved in working through the product lines, right? Like everyone should focus when we are implementing something, what is the value that we are gaining from it? Is it technical? Is it like, you know, are we decommissioning something? Are we gaining any uh, time reduction through it? Or is it reducing something? Or is it automating something? Some, some things might not be able to be measured, but then every demand or every uh, request that comes our way should be uh, looked into that manner. We did not do that at the start, but we are doing it right now to know. Uh, we do have the major ones, right? Like. Uh, we know what is it saving? Is it saving doctor's time? Is it saving nurse's time? Or is it saving help desk agent's time so that they can focus on the critical ones? So you measure the value over there. But our biggest challenge over there is like identifying it, how to measure it for every demand out there. If we cannot identify a value, then why is it the priority? So it's the, that kind of thing that we need to look into. And uh, we have. ROI identified for a couple of our high uh, projects, but not for everything. So if somebody asks what is our complete ROI, we might not have it today, but we are working through that with the impact squad. Like, what are the right questions to ask? What are the things to follow up after we release that into production? Like, you know, what's the, uh, how do you calculate that? And how do you measure it? Who's responsible? And how can we see that on our dashboard like you know to show this is at any point anyone wants to see what's the ROI we should be able to see that that's our new use case for David actually here well, you go he's we, working we talked on it. about that where it's like hey the federal government's more outcome driven it's not so much ROI so how, what outcomes do I need to focus in on that's right that's truly going to give me value how do we need to get collaborative and think bigger picture it's not just an out of the box hey you have to use this because mm -hmm. you use service now we get in understand your organization we go through right those goals outcomes business decisions all have to be mapped and then we lean into the value before we even start the other pieces right. it's right. all has to be combined we got about two minutes here so I want to each ask each of you a question. What's the biggest takeaway that you've had from the impact squad in terms of lessons learned that you want to share with your peers? Let me go first or you got it? Go ahead. Okay, so, <laughs> so that, and, and I was prepared for that one. Um, you know, there, there's a couple things that, that really, sh you know, popped out for me. The first one is leveraging the folks around you. Uh, so again, if there's no way I know everybody in this room, but I know that I can call my team and say, hey, here's my problem, and they're going to get me in contact with whoever that is or that group. Um, the second thing is being able to do exactly what you just said, right? Outcomes kind of different than ROI, but you can translate outcome into ROI. Uh, so as long as you know what you're expected to get out of it, that team helps you say, okay, well, these are the things that are going to help measure that. Uh, and we were able to successfully uh, set those conditions. Um, the plan, uh, 
again, intuition's great. Uh, all I had to do was lay out the key muscle movements uh, for a period of time. Uh, and then that team comes in and says, okay, to meet that muscle movement, here are the things that you need, and here are the things that you need to do in what order. Um, and then the two uh, more on the art side versus scientific is uh, number one, don't drink your own Kool-Aid. If you think that you've got the plan and you don't need to talk to anybody else, uh, good luck. Uh, you really need to, to go out and find some people that were successful, and it doesn't hurt to go out and find some people that weren't so successful, uh, because that's probably going to give you an indicator of what you ought to be doing. Uh, and I, I think that's it, because I know we're out of time. So. But I want to add two more points to it about uh, availability of training, which is very key, and uh, availability of technical and business knowledge people like whenever we need to know about a new module or like you know this is what we want to do like you know they come up with showing a demo of the out of the box product what it can do what are the outcomes that you can see and it's and also uh, on your existing modules that you have uh, you can always raise your technical questions or how to go back to the out of the box if you're customized. So you get a lot of help from uh, Impact Squad in uh, you know, figuring out your vision, so. So with that, we thank everyone for attending. Appreciate you all and the panelists will thank stick you. around thank a little you. bit. Yeah. Yeah.